In week four of the NFL season, we saw a few teams try to put on their best Falcons impressions. One, having a better one than everything else. Um, but if we want to talk about the Agile Falcons, I think they just suck. Bill O'Brien, <laughs> he's finally gone. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, but of course, we're going, we have our um, game-by-game -game breakdowns. We have or who's next of who is going to be fired next after Bill Bryan. And of course, my power rankings. Uh, I am your host, Ross Allen. This is going to be our NFL Week 4 recap show. And without further ado, let's just get right on into things. So we started off Week 4 with a Thursday night game with the Broncos at MetLife Stadium. Uh, it was supposedly haunted. You go check out our video about that. We talked about that in episode 51 of the podcast. But the Broncos go in there on Thursday night. They handle business 37-28. to 28. Um, Best things for this game is that, I mean, it wasn't a horrible game. Considering, that's the thing with most Thursday night football games. They look awful on paper. In actual, in actuality, they're not bad. At least it's football on a Thursday. So we can't really complain. Brett Rippin. He could very well be a great backup. He is not. He's just not started in the NFL. It was his only first start, but I guess it was against like a pretty much a college team with the Jets. Uh, he actually looked decent to his credit before a couple late interceptions. Um, and besides that, I think he very well could be a good backup to Drew Locke um, in the future. And the Jets are still just awful. Darnold did show flashes, especially that 50-yard touchdown scamper, which was embarrassing as hell for the Broncos. But for the Jets, it's... I'm so torn on Sam Darnold because, yeah, he is in one of the worst situations and one of the least ideal positions to be in the NFL with a coach that does not know what the hell he's doing. But at the same time, we've seen flashes, but nothing has been consistent out of Sam Darnold. But I would still take him over Mr. Bisky. Now let's talk about a quarterback with a way better future. Next game was the Jags at the Bengals. Joe Burrow getting his first NFL win, 33-25. Right now he is easily my NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year uh, favorite. He had another great game, 300 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. But we got to look at the key success for the Bengals. It's given Joe Burrow at least three seconds or at least two and a half seconds of being realistic in that pocket. And it's having a good run game. Joe Mixon got paid this offseason. He didn't look like he deserved it the first two weeks. But now he's really making up for it. Another great game. 151 yards, two touchdowns. Joe Mixon is starting to earn that contract, and Joe Mixon is making life a lot easier for Joe Burrow. Look at the Joes. The Joes are going to be running um, the Bengals, and those are the key to success. Gardner Minshew, though, another quarterback we need to talk about. He looked promising the first two weeks of the season. Last week, in, uh, 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 last week against the Dolphins, he kind of looked bad. He definitely regressed, but he picks it up again. Good bounce back game from 350 yards, two touchdowns, and a interception. Gardner Minshew is still the quarterback of the future for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, as I alluded to earlier in the introduction, we had the Browns at the Cowboys. Browns barely escaping this one, 49-38. And the Browns did put on their best Atlanta Falcons impression. They were up 41-14 to after three quarters of football. The Cowboys really make it interesting. They make it... 41 to 38 with four minutes ago, and then the Browns is pulled away. Couple takeaways from this game is that the Browns looked like a different team this week. They looked like they could actually play football. They looked like Browns fans could actually root for something on the Sunday. Hunt still cooking with a couple touchdowns, and Odell Beckham Jr. finally has a great game. Um, it's something that Browns fans have been waiting for for a while and the Browns team as well. He gets three total touchdowns, two receiving, and one rushing off a very nice looking fly sweep play. You see that a lot in college, at least uh, uh, my college ran it a lot. And I think the fly sweep is an under, under, uh, utilized play. If blocked up correctly, that can go for big yardage. I think people should start using it more. The Cowboys, though. I've been saying this for a couple weeks now. They are a second half team. If you want to look at look at the numbers, week two, down 29-10 to the Falcons. They end up winning that one 
40 to 39. They were down 15 to 30 to Seattle in the second half. They make it close. They still lose 38 to 31. And then in this week, of course, they were down 41 to 14, and they do make it a close game. So you never know with the Cowboys. You really don't because it looks like you can put them away in the first half. But that offense still has good firepower. Zeke, Dak, Amari Cooper really getting going this week. Um, C.D. Lamb kind of coming into his own. That team could be really good. They are good offensively. They've been putting a lot of points offensively. But it's that defense. Everyone thought this defense was going to be great in the offseason. Or at least most people did. Most an, um, an, uh, an, analysts, all the, the guys that get paid to talk football. Or like I guess I do. But legitimately get paid to talk football. They all thought it was going to be a good defense. Admittedly, I thought it was going to be a good defense as well. But they have just severely underperformed. And you got to feel bad for Dak Prescott, man. He's on pace for to throw over 6,700 passing yards. Their offense is fine. It's their defense that absolutely blows. Maybe if the offense is a little better in the first halves, they'll have a better chance of winning these games. But their defense has to step up. Next game was the Saints at the Lions. The Saints taking this one 35 to 29. The Lions get out to early 14 to nothing lead, and then they blow it. Alvin Kamara continues to look great this season. He had another um, solid game, 19 carries, 83 yards, one touch, um, touchdown, rushing, um, decent game in the air too. And the thing is, that Matt Stafford continues to have his talents absolutely wasted in Detroit. What's what's up with the Detroit Lions? In wasting talent. He had Barry Sanders. He had um, Megatron and Calvin Johnson. Now you have Matt Stafford. And he continues just... I feel I feel so bad for him. If you feel bad for Dak, you have to feel for Matt Stafford. He had a decent game too. 206 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. But I guarantee if Matt Stafford was on any team that was just decent. he If Matt Stafford was on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That Buccaneers team would be a Super Bowl contender. He would be a better fit than Tom Brady. That's how far I'm going to go with this one. Next game, we had the Seahawks at the Dolphins. Seahawks taking this one with a um, score of 35 on the Dolphins. And the real story here, the real story here is not Russell Wilson. The real story is not Tyler Lockett. The real story is not DK Metcalf. The real story is not the Dolphins is still not playing Tua which um, and starting um, Fitzpatrick, which I just want to tell you right now, that's a good decision. Dolphins aren't playing for anything. They're not going to make the playoffs. There's no need to rush Tua onto the field. And also, at the end of the day, it might be better just to get the higher draft pick if you're the Dolphins so you could surround Tua Tungavailoa with more talent before he gets going. And also the thing is, he doesn't have to start a game. You can start Fitzpatrick, have him play a half, and then you could slowly work Tua into the game and not just throw him into the Wolves with a start. To, uh. But as I was saying, the real MVP for the Dolphins is their kicker, Jason Myers. That guy put up 16 points this game, five field goals and a PAT. Five field goals to start the game for the Dolphins scoring as well. Russell Wilson... He had the worst game of the season so far. Of course, that's not saying much, but he did. We have to we have to talk about this. So 306 yards, two touchdowns and interception. Is Russell Wilson washed? Is he not even going to finish his MVP now? Is he, yet again, not going to get a single MVP vote? No, of course, I'm totally joking with that one. He's nothing to worry about. I mean, if this is a down game, I would love to have him. Of course, I would love to have him. Um, his down game is a good week for most quarterbacks. Also, Chris Carson is still making his fantasy football owners proud. 80 yards, two touchdowns, big points in there. Really wish I drafted him at this point. My, The problem with mine, in my main league, of course, I'm an idiot and I have four different teams and it's driving me crazy. But my main league... I, I'm cursed. Almost every, Pretty much every single first-round draft pick I've taken has had some sort of injury or some other problem, including David Johnson, including Le'Veon Bell, now including Austin Eckler. So, man, I'm sorry for whoever I draft. I'm just cursed, straight up. Much rather we're taking Chris Carson. But I was talking about Brady a game ago. 
Let's talk about them now. Next game was the Chargers at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers coming back in this one to take the game 38-31. to Another team that was trying to pull a Falcons impression. And it ended up being better than the Browns. The Chargers, they were up 24-7 to with a minute left to go in the first half. The turning point here was a fumble by the running back within the 10-yard line with less than a minute to go in the half. Uh, Tom Brady, of course, he takes that six-yard touchdown in a few plays, and they make the most of that effort. Then they go on just to score a bunch of unanswered points. Um, then, of course, you get the final score. Tom Brady. <sighs> I just want to stop talking about Tom Brady being good. Every single year, I feel like for the past five or six years, we've had the question, uh, is Tom Brady washed? Is this finally the year that he declines? Is this finally the year that he just isn't good anymore? As for every single time, he just looks like he's getting better. He had five touchdowns this game, 369 yards, but it is the Buccaneers. And Tom Brady still has issues when it comes to throwing pick six. I believe this is third of the season. Another pick six for him this year. And I'm saying, maybe it wasn't Jameis Winston. Maybe it wasn't Jameis Winston. Maybe it's just something in the water there in Tampa that causes any quarterback to be thrown interceptions and most importantly, pick sixes. And Justin Herbert on the other side of the field. He's good. He's good. He's he had another good game this week. 209 yards, three touchdowns, and the interception. <sighs> And I got to admit it. I got to admit it right now. When he was drafted, I was predicting him to be the most likely quarterback to be a bust. And oh boy, at least as of right now, was I wrong? This is what we do here. We, not only on the show, do I make hot takes. Do I make a lot of hot takes that are correct. But also, you know, not all of them, not all my takes are right, I will admit. And I am more than happy to admit when I'm wrong because just by doing that makes him better than what it's like 80% of any NFL analyst out there. Look at you, Skip Bayless. So, yeah, look at me. We're professional here. This is why you should watch us everywhere. Like by going to our website, www.thefourthandlong.com. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Anchor, and anywhere else you get your podcasts from. There's my plug. Next game, we had the Ravens at... Name redacted, aka the Washington football team. The Ravens took this game 31 to 17. We had Lamar Jackson turning to um, his MVP form 193 yards, two touchdowns in the interception through the air, and on the ground, he had 53 yards and a touchdown. The thing is, though, here's another situation that's similar to Sam Darnold Dwayne Haskins, not in the best situations, being is a quarterback, bad coach. Bad, or sorry, not a bad coach anymore. Now he has a good coach in Riverboat, Ron Rivera. He's in an awful organization, a losing organization. You got a owner that doesn't know how to name a football team, let alone keeps, keep his hands and eyes off of his female employees. And also, he doesn't really have an offense. Yeah, he has Terry, um, he has, uh, has, uh, Terry McGoffin, and but besides that, not much, not much. I mean, you had Adrian Pearson. Not there anymore. And he doesn't really have that good of an offensive line as well. But also the thing is, Dwayne Haskins, he's just not the answer. He's not the answer for Washington. Sure, he had 300 yards of passing this game against a good Ravens defense. But nothing to show for it. And he's just been consistently... He hasn't been awful, but just below average consistently. Uh, the... He has to have a change soon. Either Washington really has to build around him in the draft or in free agency or with trading. Or they just play Alex Smith and hope for the best. And the positive thing for the Ravens of this game, besides Lamar Jackson, because of course that is expected. Patrick Queen continues to prove that he was a steal of the draft this season. Nine tackles, um, three tackles for loss, 12 total tackles on the day. You know, was it like, they have dropped, I think they have him at 27. I have no idea how he dropped that far, but the Ravens are so lucky to have him. And I I was saying then that that is going to be the steal of the draft. And, hey, shout out to the Ravens for, and Patrick Green for proving me right so far. 
Next game we had was the Cardinals at the Panthers. And, I mean, Panth the Panthers won this one, 31-21. Mike Davis is feeling well um, for CMC, 84 yards and a touchdown. But the story of the game is, who are the Arizona Cardinals? They are having an identity crisis right now. When the, it, it comes to not like, oh, are we an offense team? Are we a defense team? Are we a pass every team? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about who the hell shows up to the game on the given Sunday. The first two weeks of the season, they looked good. They looked like they were going to make some noise in that best division in football, the NFC West. I mean, they beat the Niners, which was a shocker. Probably the biggest upset of the week in week one. Then they go out and, um, and, and then they beat... The Washington football team, which is expected, but they had a good showing there, 30-15. But then, now they've lost back-to-back -back games to the Lions, and that was their first win since October of last year. And now they get beat up pretty badly by the Panthers. That I mean, although they have a talent, talented team, they're not a playoff contender this year, whereas the Cardinals should be. The Cardinals have a lot riding on this next game. I, I really do believe so. Their next game is against the Jets. So this is a good way to get a bounce back victory. This is a good way to go back to your bread and butter offensive plays. This is a good way to just to get your feet back under you and to get a win under your belt to stop the skid. It's a good way to build confidence. But at the same time, if they look bad, let alone somehow in some way actually lose this game, that is going to spell disaster moving forward for the rest of your season. This is going to be something to watch out for. Next game we need to talk about was the Vikings and the Texans. Vikings gained their first win of the season in a 31-23 performance. And they get this win based off of Kirk Cousins not being bad. He wasn't good. But he just wasn't bad. And that's what happens. Um, for, that's what the Vikings need. And then also, it's okay to not be bad and to not be good. Just be average right there. As long as you have a guy like Dalvin Cook running the football. 27 carries, 130 yards, 2 touchdowns. I knew he was going to have a big game this week. And it sucked because I played against him in fantasy. And obviously, I lost due to that. Deshaun Watson, he is stuck in... Do I even want to call it purgatory? I, I think that purgatory is too good to call this. I think Deshaun Watson is just straight up stuck in hell with this. He has another solid game. 300 yards, 2 touchdowns. He's still making, uh, he's still proving that he's worth that big contract that he signed. He's still proving that he's one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. But at the same time, he has no one around him. And he, they trade away his best wide receiver. And now he doesn't really have a wide receiver one there. I mean, David Johnson isn't bad. Uh, their offense line isn't bad. Their defense isn't bad. But that, look at the team. That's what you call them. They're, they're not bad when it comes to talent. But they're, they need more. They need more, and they're still 0-4 in the season. And because they start 0-4 in the season, wouldn't you know that this was, for whatever reason, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. For whatever reason, this loss is what finally gets head coach and general manager of the Houston Texans, Bill O'Brien, canned. He's finally gone. So at least this is a good way to start. If you want Deshaun Watson to do well, if you want him to have a good season, you start off by cutting and firing the biggest ball and chain that has ever existed, uh, or at least one of the biggest that's ever existed. And for a moment, can we talk about just how bad, I mean, just how bad assistant coaches for Bill, Bill Belichick usually tend to be in the NFL. Three, well, at least as of two days ago, three of them were coaching. We had Bill O'Brien, we had Adam Gase, and we have Matt Patricia. All three of them were either fired or should be fired. Uh, Bill Belichick's just the man. Also, uh, a, a guy that did work under him, still does, Mike McDaniels, offensive coordinator. We saw his stint in trying to be a head coach. We saw him with the Denver Broncos. But they, they go like 5-11. and 11. They have some really bad seasons. Uh, the only good thing he does is sign Tim Tebow or uh, draft Tim Tebow. And it's, it's good for... In, in every single way, except for when it comes to actually winning. To be fair, they had the greatest 8-8 eight eight season of all time, if that's something to be proud of. 
and that's what you got. But Bill Belichick assistants suck. And I, I go off a track record, you shouldn't hire them. We'll talk about Bill O'Brien later in the show as well. Next game was the Giants and at the Rams in that beautiful, beautiful stadium that they have down there in Southern California. I can't wait till there's fans in there. I can't wait to see the Super Bowl in there. I think the biggest show we're going to get there in, like, the biggest first show is, I think, WrestleMania. They're going to have WrestleMania there next year. Hopefully, they can get fans for that. I just want to see that, no matter what's going there, whether it be football or pro wrestling, for what it's, I mean, pro wrestling is pro wrestling, but I just want to see fans. I just want to see fans in that stadium. I just want to see the whole nine yards. I want to see what that whole stadium could look like when they're trying to put on the show because damn, does it look good. But what didn't look good was, I mean, this game as a whole, the Rams looked bad against the second worst team in the league. They had, they only managed 240 total yards of offense and 15 first downs in this game. The Giants out offense and out first down the Rams in this game. But also, I mean, that's not really... You have, is a Rams fan, I'd be worried about this performance. I would genuinely be worried about this. They're just looking really bad. At least they have a good defense, and at least they were playing a bad Giants team. But the story out of this one, not a lot of people are talking about how bad the Rams look, which I think is a mistake. I think more people should be looking into this. But let's just talk about the funnest topic of the game. Jalen Rams and Golden Tate get into a physical altercation. I guess you want to call it a fight. I think they threw a couple punches, but it's closer to a physical altercation. And then the best part about this is that Golden Tate waited outside the Rams locker room for Jalen Ramsey. Nothing ever happened about this. But the craziest thing, I just found out um, looking at Twitter about this. Apparently, they were fighting. Apparently, the story is that Jalen Ramsey um, was having relations with Golden Tate's sister. Jalen Ramsey got said sister pregnant. Jalen Ramsey then proceeded to leave said sister. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I can't blame Golden Tate for this. I, I don't blame him. That's It's justified. It's 100% justified. If this is, is, is as true as it is, 100% justified with this one. <laughs> Uh, the next game we had was the Colts at the Bill uh, at the Bears and the Colts, man. They they finally make America happy. The Bears are finally not an undefeated team, even though they were the most undeserving undefeated team after three weeks. And Nick Foles looked eh, two forty nine yards, touchdown interception. Even if he does that every single week. I'd still take him long term than Mitch Trubisky. Still would. I'm okay with that. And the best part about this game is rookie. Hot Rod from Georgia. Kicker Rodrigo Blankenship. He is the best kicker in the NFL. I think he's um, he had first in field goals attempted. Tied for first for most field goals made with like 12, I think. Four of them came in this game. He was a He was perfect and... He's just the best point scorer for the Colts this season. And he's been a lot of fun to watch with the goggles. Um, Best kicker in Georgia history. I really like this guy. He is definitely for the brand. And he's definitely the Colts MVP as of right now. Now we go on to the Bills at the Raiders. A lot. I was talking to some people. Um, some friends of the show, and they were thinking that this game could be a trap game for the Bills. The Raiders have been a little scary um, to other teams. They did get that good win over the New Orleans Saints on Monday Night Football, and they did look good in that game. But the Bills are better than the Saints, of course. The Bills take this 30-23. to Josh Allen, another solid game. Three total touchdowns, two through the air, one on the ground. And I think the most interesting story out of this one, besides the Bills being undefeated and still looking really good, is a continuation of the story and the narrative that John Gruden does not like Derek Carr as the quarterback. We've seen so many rumors and insider information and a bunch of stories and reports on this stuff that Gruden isn't sold on Carr, that he wants a different quarterback, that he was even thinking about 
is trading Carr a little bit. Uh, it doesn't help that he signed Marcos Mariota as a backup. And we also heard him. I guess one of the best things um, that we've seen this season or in the whole no fans era of sports. In the UFC, it's great because you, the punches are just so much louder. You get to hear the corner men, and it's a lot of fun. I really do appreciate that. You get to hear the fighters talking trash. In the NFL, you hear everything for the sidelines. And um, it was picked up a little bit on the TV broadcast, but from people that were actually there in the stadium, um, in the, the was it, $2 billion, $2.1 billion giant Roomba in the middle of that desert in Vegas, the people that are actually there in person were able to hear John Gruden absolutely cussing out Derek Carr after a bad timeout. And if this doesn't continue to push a narrative, I don't know what is. John Gruden, and I truly believe it, John Gruden does not want Derek Carr as a starting quarterback. And I believe once, if he is able to get past the organization by, uh, what, Mike Mayock is the GM, and then the the, the loser running the, the organization, I think he will. I think he will. If the Raiders somehow are able to get a good quarterback this year, maybe not the best draft class besides Trevor Lawrence, and the man out of North Dakota State, uh, he's probably going to ditch car. Next game was a Sunday night game. Typically, Sunday nights are for one of the best games of the week. One of the most anticipated ones. One of the ones that is going to bring us the most action. But what we got Sunday night was an injury bowl. We had the Eagles at the Niners. I guess it could have looked cool on paper before the season when the schedule was made. But now in week four, where we are now... I'd rather watch that Thursday night football game again. But we had the Eagles winning the injury bowl, upsetting the 49ers. Even with Kittle just having an absolutely monster performance in his return to the gridiron. 15 targets, 15 catches, 183 yards, and a touchdown. George Kittle is still the best tight end in the league. Travis Kelsey, he's second. It's a lot of people think it's 1A, 1B. No, it's de clearly defined 1 and 2. Wentz, Carson Wentz does enough for a win. Uh, I mean, he looked fine. He looked better than usual. I'm not sure if that's saying much. But the problem here is Nick Mullins, he absolutely crapped the bed this week. 200 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. And one of those interceptions was, was a pick six. And it just, I, I still don't know. I've rewatched it. And I think I know who he's trying to get the ball to. But it it was one of the worst passes I think I've ever seen. Nowhere near the receiver. It looked like he was throwing straight to the defender. That also wasn't close to the receiver. So I I just don't know what he saw in that play. Really don't. Uh, the Niners are probably in a bit of trouble at this point. If I'm a San Francisco 49er fan... You have to be worried 2-2 two two right now in the best division in football. You can fall behind very quickly. Um, right now, you're just tanking on the hope that the Cardinals continue to lose. That's what you got right now. Um, at least next week, Niners uh, have an easier game at home against the Dolphins. Another winnable game right there, at least on paper. <sighs> and, man, it's there's something about the Niners. It seems like, so. There's a big streak going on, thing, like the last nine years or something like that. One of the four teams that made it to Championship Sunday or Championship Weekend, at least, has not made the playoffs the next season. Last season, of course, it was the Chiefs, it was the um, Niners, it was the Packers, and it was uh, um, Titans and. I thought before the season it was going to be the Packers because last year they clearly looked like the worst team out of the Final Four. And now, now, it has to be the Niners. It has to be the Niners is the most likely one to not make the playoffs this year. And we'll see what we'll see what changes. Moving on into the Monday night action. We had the COVID delayed game. We had the Pats at the Chiefs. Chiefs taking this one 26-10. Uh, the Chiefs lean on their defense this week. Um, the score doesn't really show the offensive struggles because they did have the pick six. 
and they um, the only touchdown passes that Patrick Mahomes had and the only offensive touchdowns they had this game were two shovel passes for six yards each. We had no big deep throw. We had no like 10, 20 yard typical Patrick Mahomes touchdown pass. A couple shovel passes. That, that's all we had right there. Kansas City had less total yards and first downs than the New England Patriots. And that's even with the Patriots having Brian Hoyer and Jared Stidham combining for three interceptions this week. Stidham with two of them and Brian Hoyer with one of them. Stidham came in like the fourth quarter after Hoyer was benched. Did not do much better. And I remember, I've seen articles. And I was listening to a lot of people. A lot of people out of New England. They were, uh, they were saying, hey, the Stidham guy. You know, don't sleep on him. He's the next big thing for the Patriots. Bill Belichick is going to make him into something great. And he's going to be the best quarterback in the AFC East. <laughs> uh, I mean, the Chiefs have a def- decent defense, but Stidham... He sucks. No. No. No, 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 no. No. That's one hell of a cold take if I've ever heard one. Now, the last game of the week, we had the Falcons at the Packers. And the funny thing was, out of all these teams that are trying to put on their Falcons impression, the Falcons don't even Falcon in this game because they never had the lead to begin with. Um, they, they just never had control in this game. Aaron Rodgers' revenge tour 2020 still very much alive and well through four weeks now. Aaron Rodgers, 327 yards, four touchdowns, no mistakes. He is still, he's playing angry, quite frankly. Frankly, he is pissed off at all the critics trying to say that he was washed up, that he's done. And I love his quote that he had recently. He came out and said, um, talking about the critics, like he doesn't like all of them bad mouthing him. Um, he say, and he said that his bad game is a game that most quarterbacks wish that they could have, and, or um, something along those lines. And I respect that. I respect the hell out of that. Aaron Rodgers is one of the biggest competitors in the league, and boy, does it show. But we got to talk about the biggest surprise of this week. Of course, we weren't really surprised about Rodgers lighting up the Falcons' defense. You have to be surprised about... Robert Tanyan, possibly the biggest surprise of the season so far. Six catches, 98 yards, three touchdowns. Almost no one even knew who this man was. He's not even verified on Twitter. You got Imagine having your defense led by a guy that's not even verified. Okay, and Twitter verifies everyone uh, except for us for some reason. But you can go follow us at 4th Long Radio on Twitter. And uh, this was a lot of fun. And he was he tweeted out having your uh, that was cool having his first NFL reception from Aaron Rodgers on Monday Night Football. That's super cool. One hell of a story. And I really hope that this just really kickstart his career and he becomes a big factor over there in Green Bay. But there it is. That is all the games from Week Four. Moving to something I said to keep Bill, um, Bill O'Brien in mind. And we talked about this at the beginning. The question I want to ask you all now is, quite simply, who's next? Who is going to be the next NFL coach to be fired now that Bill O'Brien is out? And admittedly, I was surprised that Bill O'Brien was the first coach out of these guys to be fired. We talked a couple weeks ago um, with Alex on the show, um, talking about who's going to be the first one to be fired to be fired um or who should be fired at least we were talking adam Gase, bill o'brien not patricia and dan quinn it was bill o'brien so i don't think anyone of us got that so uh i'm more impressed that the texans finally had enough as an organization and came to the realization that he sucks he's just not good especially not a good gm in a sense, trading away the best receiver in football for David Johnson and a couple picks, maybe. And it was just awful. Just awful. Um, I got my wish because I put out a video literally probably back in March. March, maybe. Um, talking about that um, Bill O'Brien should be fired. 
talked about that in our um, in a couple weeks ago. Finally got my wish, Texans fans. Finally got your wish because he's out of there. But now that leaves the coaches we've been talking about is throughout the names: Adam Gates, Matt Patricia, and Dan Quinn. Like I said, I would like to throw in a fourth name to keep it because we have four. Bill O'Brien's out now, so we need a fourth. The next man up on the hot seat is Mike McCarthy down in Dallas. Now, do I think he's going to be the next uh, coach to be fired? No, I don't. No, I don't. That leaves us between, realistically, Adam Gase, Matt Patricia, and Dan Quinn. Adam Gase, he has a bunch of excuses to fall back on in New York. Matt Patricia, he's a Bill Belichick guy. So... He, they, they're going to hold on to him for that fact, maybe. Dan Quinn. He's the one with the least amount of excuses. He's the one with the most talented team out of all these guys. Maybe besides Mike McCarthy. And he's the one that consistently loses. He shouldn't be a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Or, or coach, excuse me. He, should, he has a quarterback that shouldn't have won the Super Bowl. He has a quarterback that should have been Super Bowl MVP. But he doesn't. And it's because he cannot hold on to leads. He can get a lead, sure. He can get a lead. But for whatever reason, they just can't do it. And Dan Quinn's going to be the next one to be fired based off of them needing not only a culture change, but simply just a better coach. With that sort of talent, you cannot justify being this bad. You just can't. So that's my opinion. Dan Quinn, if he isn't the next coach to be fired... He should be. Let me know what you guys think, whether it be in the comments um, on Twitter, whether it be on the comments of our YouTube page, or even best, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with your answer to this question in the review. That'll be the best one right there. And to wrap up this show, we have, of course, our power rankings. And it might be anticlimactic. But, pause for dramatic effect to build anticipation. All five, all four, uh, five teams are the same from last week. They all won, and they all look good, and I cannot justify having them drop. In, from five to one, it is the Bills, Packers, Seahawks, Ravens, and Chiefs. Chiefs won. They might not have looked the best. They might have a little cause for concern, but they still won nonetheless. Ravens, they won my fr- have a little cause for concern that they didn't blow out the football team by more, I guess. Uh, I still like them number two. The Seahawks. Okay. Now, here's where it comes. You know, wh- here's where the little controversy is. I was debating with myself on between the Seahawks and Packers. Who's the third and who's the fourth? It was tough for me. Both undefeated teams. Both teams with very good-looking quarterbacks. Um, Russell Wilson first in the MVP race right now, Aaron Rodgers in a very close second, both with offenses at click. A Seahawks defense is a little suspect, but I believe they could get it fixed. Packers defense is immediately looking better than the Seahawks, but overall, n- the way I sell this in my head, neutral playing field, perfect conditions, everyone's healthy. Who wins a football game between these two teams? And right now, I think it's the Seahawks. So the Seahawks for me say three, Packers say four. And the Buffalo Bills, I want to move them up. Quite frankly, I want to move them up. I'm still really hot on them. But I think number five, there's a lot of people out there like um, like some ESPNs and Bleach Reports and stuff like that. I don't even think they had the Bills in number five. A lot more people should. The Bills are a top five team in the NFL. They have the defense to prove it. They have the quarterback to prove and the offense to prove it. And I really like them right there. Really do. But let me know what you think, of course, as I talked about Twitter, YouTube comments, or best of all, like I said, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with your power rankings in the review. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it for our week four NFL recap. Let me know what you guys think. Um, who, is the, who had the best game this week? Who looked the worst this week? Who has the most to lose going to week five? And who's likely going to be the team that stays undefeated the longest? Um, like I mentioned earlier in the show, follow us on Twitter at Fourth Long Radio, Instagram at Fourth Long Radio. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Anchor, anywhere else you find your podcast from. We're there, guaranteed. Um, 
And the best way the place to find everything is at our website, www.thefourthandlong.com. Everything will be linked as well. Also, buy your merch. We got some very nice uh, looking and feeling and fitting t-shirts. We had this one. Shout out to our Aussie football fans. Um, we have our footy is underrated t-shirt. Tri-blend t-shirt. We have a new tri-blend t-shirt with our logo um, on the chest. And the back is nice navy tri-blend. Those ones are genuinely comfortable. And I love them. Keep everyone safe um, it, because I know everywhere is enforcing masks still. So we have our fourth and long mask as well. I still have it on me in my pocket because I wear it to school. I wear it to work. I wear it everywhere. If you're looking at video, I got it right here for you guys. Looking good right there. We got tank tops and best of all, we have socks and we have fanny packs. <laughs> but then, I'll, um, that, that's all my whole spiel. Thank you all for listening to the very end of the show. And we will catch you guys in the next show. Have a good one.